When I came out of film school, I thought that I knew everything, that I was a great filmmaker. And oh boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I knew my basics, and that's it. I made so many mistakes over the years, but the most important thing was that I also learned from those mistakes. So in this video, I want to share those mistakes so that you don't have to make them. Now before I start, guys, i first like to know from you, what was your biggest filmmaking mistake? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always curious from other people what those mistakes were. And now, without further ado, let's start with the video. My name is Jordi for CineCam.net and welcome to Creative Tuesday. Tip number one, often you do pay attention to camera framing and so on, but one thing that most aspiring filmmakers forget is the height of the camera. With presentations or interviews, you want to have the camera at eye level. Slightly below or higher than the eye level feels weird and should be avoided unless you have a good reason for it. Going lower or higher with the camera can actually give a nice perspective, but make sure that you move the camera high or low enough so that it doesn't feel like a mistake. Tip number two, backgrounds. While we're doing all the effort in making our subject look good on camera, we often forget about the backgrounds. Make sure that there are no objects behind the subject that could give a weird impression, such as a tree or a pole sticking out someone's head. Also think about brightness and colors. When your subject is wearing dark clothes and your background is also dark, then your subject will get lost in that. You want to get some difference, so in this example it's better that your subject wears brighter clothes. And the same goes with movement. Are there distracting elements in the background that do not add to the story? Then try to avoid that. If these tricks were part of the story, then it's okay. But if not, look for something else. A very simple trick to make your subject pop out is to work with blue colors in the background, as that is in contrast with skin tones. Now, having depth in your background separates your subject as well, as you get a more shallow depth of field. Anyways, there's a lot that you can do with the background and it could have its own video. If you like to see a tutorial about that, let me know in the comments down below and who knows. I also like to mention real quick that we have an in-depth class on Skillshare about filmmaking from beginner to pro. Now in this class, I teach the entire foundation about camera work and storytelling that you would also see in your first two years at film school. Funny enough, some teachers at the film school where I've been to have actually been using my class for the new students there. So it is definitely a class that I can recommend to anyone if you're starting out with filmmaking. You can click the first link in the description down below to check it out right now. Now when you sign up for the first time to Skillshare, you'll actually get two months for free and after that it's less than $10 per month, which gives you access to all of the premium classes on Skillshare. All right, let's continue. Mistake number three, lighting. And more specific, hot spots and flat lighting. When you're starting out, you'll mostly be working with existing lights. The outdoors are fairly easy. Like mentioned many times before on the channel, draw an invisible line through your subject parallel with the camera, and now make sure that the sun is always on the other side of the line. This doesn't have to be straight behind the subject, it could also be on the side. This way you're creating depth, your subject won't have the sun in his eyes and you get some contrast. Indoor, a common mistakes are hot spots, usually from small spotlights in the ceiling. Try to avoid that they shine into the face of your subject. Again, draw that invisible line and try to get such lights behind the subject and make it function as a backlight. As for the fill light, make sure that there is some contrast over the face. Don't put your subject like right in front of a window, but instead in an angle. One thing you could also do is buy or create a flag, which is just a black fabric around the frame. Placing that on one side of the subject will cut away some lights, creating contrast. And this technique is also called negative fill. Tip number four, when you're operating a camera, don't lock yourself in. When you have to take a shot of someone tying your shoes, for example, I see a lot of filmmakers sitting down and locking the camera in to make the perfect shot. In reality, you've locked yourself in. When your subject does something sporadic or something else unexpected, you will miss that moment, or at least your transition to it will fail. Unless you're doing fiction, I would always recommend to take a flexible pose while making your shot. From such a pose, you can smoothly bring your camera to a next action. And finally, I'd like to add another common mistake, which is mixing camera styles. An example is where you start the day by filming everything from a tripod or a slider. But as the day progresses, you start losing time, everyone gets tired on set, and a lot of the time I would see filmmakers suddenly go handheld because it goes faster. 
When you don't have a storytelling reason to suddenly change your camera style, then don't change it. Never do something because you're getting tired and you want to be home before dinner. You will regret that in the edit. So keep focusing and go 100% for the project until you got every shot on tape. Which brings me to the last mistake to avoid and that is not monitoring. This is for both audio and video. With audio, it's simple. You just plug in some headphones or earbuds and listen to the audio while it's being captured. Even when you see the levels move, it is still important to monitor. We have had it happen so many times where a sudden crack in the audio appeared, a wind blow or even someone's lavalier mic that came loose and now hangs somewhere in your jackets. Audio levels don't tell such issues, only headphones can. And the same is with video. Looking at your display is not monitoring. Use the built-in tools like histograms, zebras, exposure assistance, etc. to determine whether or not your shot looks good. If you find yourself making such mistakes often, then stick some pieces of tape to your camera with a checklist on it. Before every shot, go over your checklist, because in the beginning, it might be too much information on your display, so only having those essentials stick to your camera could be really helpful. And those were my top 5 mistakes that you should avoid at all time. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely learn a lot from my beginners class, so click that first link in the description down below to check it out right now. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative. It's not on the list, guys, but um, it's because I'm a little bit embarrassed about it. But one mistake that I also did once was, um, like, I forgot something to bring on a shoot. It wasn't the SD card, no. Once I forgot the camera.